Cursory History of Electronic Gaming in the 20th and 21st Century for the Worlds of Wordcraft, English 115F, Fall 2007. So what are the goals of this presentation? Let's explore the idea of a game. What is a game? Let's contemplate games as both fiction and rules. Set forth some basic vocabulary and categories to assure a common language during our discourse. Some people call categories genres in video games. Journey through a timeline of facts related to gaming. And this is in another presentation, but we'll queue it up at the end of this particular presentation. So what is a game? Is it entertainment? Oxford English Dictionary tells us that it's amusement, delight, fun, mirth, and sport. Now, when I looked in the Oxford English Dictionary, there were 17 entries for the word game. Fiction or rules. Our class text for this semester, one of the many class texts that we have, is the work by Jesper Jewell called Half Real, Video Games Between Real Rules and Fictional Worlds, the core thesis of his book the main argument of this book that video games are rules and fiction. This is the key message that we want to put forward is inside of a video game you have both rules and a fictional, fictional environment in which that those rules are explored and, and tested. It is a basic paradox of games that while the rules themselves are generally definite, unambiguous and easy to use, the enjoyment of a game depends on these easy to use rules presenting challenges that cannot be easily overcome. Playing a game is an activity of improving skills in order to overcome these challenges, and playing a game is therefore fundamentally a learning experience. Reiterating the bolded text, enjoyment of a game depends on these easy-to-use rules presenting challenges that cannot be easily overcome. The fiction side. Fiction plays a different role in different games and game genres, and while some players may be thrilled by the fiction of a game, others may dismiss it as unimportant decoration of the game rules. Reiterating the bold, some players may be thrilled by the fiction of a game, others may dismiss it as unimportant. Rules can occur without fiction. There is no fiction to checkers. There is no fiction to chess. There is a fiction behind Lord of the Rings Online, a very rich and dynamic fiction, and Lord of the Rings Online also has a very rich and dynamic rule set, an environment with boundaries and definite combat and crafting and economic resolution that you have to fit within. And this fitting within comes to the idea of an emergence game or a progression game. Again, back to Jesper Jewell, two basic ways in which games are structured and provide challenges for players. Emergence, which means a number of simple rules combining to form interesting variations, and progression, separate challenges presented serially. Those are two important concepts. Emergence is the primordial game structure, where a game is specified as a small number of rules that combine and yield large number of game variations for which the player must design strategies to handle. The bold, reiterating again, small number of rules that combine and yield large number of game variations. This is emergence. Progression. In progression games, the player has to perform a predefined set of actions in order to complete the game. One feature of the progression game is that it yields strong control to the game designer. Since the designer controls the sequence of events, progression games are also where we find most games with storytelling ambitions. Reiterating the bold, perform a predefined set of actions in order to complete the game. This is a progression game, particularly typified in the adventure genre. Let's talk about categories or genres. The next section is going to present to you several categories or genres. They're not all inclusive, but they represent a good sort of superset of all the categories and genres that exist. And remember, I'm using those terms genre and category interchangeably. Ask yourself two sets of questions when I go through the, the genre category descriptions. The first set of questions, is this a rules or fiction situation? Does the category illustrate games as fiction? Does the category illustrate games as rules? The second set of question, is this a progression or emergence situation? Does the category illustrate progression? Does the category illustrate emergence? I'm going to list these off for you quickly. Arcade, adventure, board, console, first-person shooter, MMORPG, PC, real-time strategy, role-playing, 
simulation, and sports. As I say, there are many, many subcategories, subgenres. There are many, many other ones that exist in the minds of uh, people who do reviews and are critically observing the game industry. These are sufficient for the purposes of our discussion today. Arcade. An arcade is, in, in, by the way, let me put a, a statement on this slide here. Anything you see in quotes is a reference to the Oxford English Dictionary. I pulled the definition from the Oxford English Dictionary. An arcade game is a mechanical or electronic game of a type originally popularized in amusement arcades. This is Pac-Man and this is Pinball. Pinball as two, two simple examples in the arcade category. Now the Pac-Man screenshot you see there is actually from an open source game that I downloaded from SourceForge called Pac-Dasher. You can go get that and play it yourself. It's really a very close approximation of Namco's original game. An adventure category, this screenshot that you see here is a screenshot from the example that I have at the top, Zork. An adventure game is designating a role-playing or computer game in which the participant plays a fantasy role in an episodic story, I'm sorry, an episodic adventure story. Zork and Mist are two classics in this particular category. Notice on the screenshot, you're west of a house, you're in an open field, there's a boarded front door and a small mailbox is there. What do I do? I type in the command open mailbox. The system responds, opening the small mailbox reveals a leaflet. Then I get the leaflet. System response taken. Then I type INV, and the system says, I don't know how to react to that. The INV is not something in the rule set. I retype it, hit inventory, I get my outcome, which is I wanted to know what I was carrying. I was carrying a leaflet. Board games. These, are, these definitions without quotes are mine. Games played on a physical board where players take turns. Chess, checkers, monopoly, games of this nature. Generally, you'll find that the rules are resolved or the conflict, the situation, whatever the goals of the game are, are resolved through a sequence of dice rolling events. Checkers and chess have pieces that have rules and contend with each other. But all these rules and all these, these structures unfold around a particular board. Console game, an electronic device usually requir requiring connection to a television on which computer games may be loaded and played. Dead or Alive, Dance Dance Revolution on the Xbox 360 pictured therein. The key distinction here is a juxtaposition between the PC game, which relies heavily on keyboard and personal computer technology. Not that a lot of the technology from personal computers are in consoles, but it is generally the console with an associated controller. This type of uh, entertainment device was popularized in the late 1970s by Atari, Sears, and Magnavox when they introduced Pong, they introduced the Odyssey, and they introduced various table tennis Pong games in the consumer electronics market, which you'll see in the timeline a little bit later on. First-person shooter, FPS, designating a computer game in which the player's view of the action as, is as though through the eyes of the protagonist. Doom and Return to Castle Wolfenstein are two examples. The screenshot is an older version of Doom. MMORPG, massively multiplayer online role-playing games. Lord of the Rings Online, Dark Age of Camelot are two very good examples of this particular category. The screenshot is a master level quest, which is actually requiring, in, in this case, 150 people or more went on it. I can't imagine the number of people. The, all, every single avatar you see there in that screenshot is actually a person playing the game. This was for my master level five for a character I have named Band-Aid who was working to get a font of power. Very, very uh, in-depth quest. PC, personal computer, any video game that's played on a personal computer, Civilization, King's Quest, the list is ad nauseum, but it's just an important distinction relative to the console. Real-time strategy, video games that take place in the real time and involve resource management, territory management, and unit placement. This screenshot is from the Age of Empire. SimCity is, an SimCity is another example of this particular category. Every one of those houses there produce a different unit. You have to, in real time, as time is unfolding, you're not going to take turns. You don't put all your moves in a queue and press move along. You have to be playing the game and actively engaged in it. There is no turn-taking. Role-playing games. Players act out the role of characters. Closely approximates free-form drama and generally involves a group of players together in a room or around a table. Classic of classics, Dungeons and & Dragons and a D20. 
modern system. There is no video game aspect to this, but this particular category of games had a tremendous, I think the most formative impact on RPGs and MMO, MMORPGs today. There's something that you should get an understanding of if you don't know what Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is. We'll have a chat about that in class. Simulation games. The technique of imitating the behavior of some situation or process, whether economic, military, mechanical, by means of a suitably analogous situation or apparatus, especially for the purpose of studying or personnel training. Flight Simulator X, which is a screenshot I have there to the right, that's actually an in-cockpit uh, screenshot from Flight Simulator X, or an M1A1 tank simulator. When I was flying over Wichita, Kansas, I learned to fly a Cessna 152 in Kansas. On my long cross-country, I had flown from Augusta, Kansas, three Alpha Uniform, to Ponca City, Oklahoma, around to Wichita Mid-Continent. When I was flying from Ponca City to Wichita Mid-Continent, there was a one, I can't remember the name of the little airport, there was one airport that I was looking for to land before I went to Wichita Mid-Continent. I got blown off course. Fortunately for me, in Flight Simulator, I had the Kansas scenery. I had been flying Microsoft Flight Simulator 97, getting real-time weather, and I had had the exact same situation occur with my flight simulator that I had in real life, I was able to correct very quickly because I saw the, the landmarks and I landed perfectly as expected thanks to that simulation. Now, was that simulation a game? It's right there in the boundaries. You can use it as a game if it's entertainment. However, I was using it both as entertainment and a learning aid. Also, um, you can ask me about this in class, M1A1 tank simulator when I was in Fort Knox, I was able to go through and have an interesting time driving an M1A1 tank sim simulator at Fort Knox. Sports games, video games that simulate the play of traditional sports, FIFA Soccer, Madden NFL, Madden NCAA. You'll see a Vanderbilt ball player running down the ball field for a touchdown in the screenshot. Beautiful graphics on Madden and beautiful physics. So that concludes our broadcast here. You're going to continue this in the second part of the chronology and influences of games.